Hi, this is Nancy Reed, and this is part seven of the ophthalmology lecture series for University of Lynchburg's Physician Assistant Studies program. And we're going to be covering glaucoma in this section. Um, we're going to talk about acute angle closure glaucoma and chronic open angle closure glaucoma. So we're just going to review real quick um, with the uh, photo below. You can see the ciliary body um, and the ciliary body attaches to the lens. The ciliary body is what makes the aqueous humor and the aqueous humor is what provides um, the uh, liquid in the anterior portion of the eye that forms the eye. And so if you have too much aqueous humor, the eye can become very hard. So that aqueous humor goes from the ciliary bodies to the posterior chamber through the pupil into the anterior chamber and then it drains out through the trabecular meshwork and through the canal schlem. So it's important to keep in mind that's the normal um, physiologic route for aqueous humor to be produced uh, and as it uh, transfers through the eye. So in acute closure angle glaucoma, I tell people to think of this as like a bathtub. If you turn the water on in the bathtub and you put a drain in it, um, and you clog and you plug up the drain and you say walk off and forget about it very quickly that bathtub is going to overflow so in acute closed angle glaucoma it's like putting a plug in the bathtub but we're actually plugging up the trabecular meshwork with the edge of the um, iris and that allows no outlet for the aqueous humor to um, exit the eye. So then the pressures in the eye build up very quickly and the person becomes very sick. So one of the ways um, if you are not able to have a tono pin to be able to measure interocular pressure, one of the physical exam um, techniques is by inspecting the anterior chamber by using a pin light. So if you take a pin light and you shine it from the temporal side of the eye, uh, you will have a if you look for the crescent-shaped shadow in the medial side of the iris, uh, the iris is flat, there should be no shadow. And so we, that's what you want to see, no shadow. If the iris bows, which means there's a bowing because there's too much fluid in that uh, anterior chamber, then a shadow will form. Um, and the drainage of the aqueous humor is blocked. That gives you an idea. So if you don't have a tono pin, um, that pin light to the temporal side of the eye will help you um, de determine whether uh, you have ex excess aqueous humor in the anterior chamber. So with acute angle closure glaucoma, um, less than 10% of all glaucoma cases in the United States account for acute angle closure glaucoma. Ex the important part about this is that this is an emergent situation. Signs and symptoms include severe pain. They're going to have blurred vision due to closure of the pre-existing narrow anterior chamber. And they could have halos around lights. And this is an extremely rapid onset of symptoms. Risk factors for this are the elderly, Asian Inuits, and farsighted people. So um, these people already are predisposed to have shallow anterior chambers and uh, are, are at increased risk. So think of the amount of uh, Asian population throughout the world. So from a standpoint of worldwide risk, acute angle glo closure glaucoma is, is very high throughout the world, although here in the United States, it only accounts for about 10% of the glaucoma cases. So just know that if you practice outside the United States, this may be a much more prevalent um, condition. So on physical exam, if you can test interocular pressure with a tono pen or with a puff test, these people are going to have high interocular pressure, sometimes as high as 50 millimeters of mercury. They're going to have conjunctival injection. They'll have a corneal uh, epithelial edema, and they may have a mid-dilated non-reactive pupil. So whenever you shine a light in their eye, their pupil is not going to necessarily react. They uh, have shallower chambers in the presence of occlusion. The eye will be hard. So if you actually palpate the eye, it's going to be hard to the touch. It's going to feel more like a, a golf ball 
um, than normal eye. And the cornea is going to be what's called steamy. So think about if you're in the shower and the steam builds up on the shower door. That's kind of what the cornea is going to look like. And these people may actually develop nausea and vomiting um, and abdominal pain because uh, the pain is so great in the eye, it just makes them sick to their stomach. So treatment, you got to get these guys to emergent, uh, emergently to see an ophthalmologist. The nice thing about this condition is you don't have to worry about these people um, not coming in. They're going to find you. So if they develop this, they're going to immediately present somewhere, whether it's an urgent care, their family practice doctor, or an emergency room. They're going to be seeking help. And so in order to um, treat this, the goal is to uh, decrease the interocular pressure as quickly as possible. And we do that with IV acetazolamide, IV mannitol. You can also give these guys beta blocker, um, eye drops, uh, meiotic agents. And, and then if need be in the condition continues, you may have to do laser peripheral iridotomy, which we're going to talk about more when you look at this um, video that is on YouTube. So um, one of the things that kind of confuses people, so a lot of people think like, uh, if you dilate the eye, the pupil becomes bigger and it drains, but that's not the case. If you dilate the eye, the iris is opened more and you're just putting that plug deeper and deeper into the bathtub. So um, don't, don't let that confuse you. So you want a um, mitotic uh, agent. So here is an example of acute angle closure glaucoma you see on the patient's right eye that's that steamy appearance of the cornea and look at the different sizes of his pupil this pupil is um, smaller and this pupil has that mid dilated effect and if you were to poke on his eye his eye would be very hard compared to the other eye so chronic open angle glaucoma um, has a different presentation altogether and it accounts for about 90% of all glaucoma here in the United States. And we like to call this the silent thief of sight. So a lot of people um, have chronic open angle glaucoma and they don't even know it. And uh, one of the things that happens is a loved one brings them in to the ophthalmologist or to the doctor and say, yeah, I think there's something wrong with this person's vision. Um, you know, he, he changes lanes and, and he looks over his shoulder. He doesn't see cars and he pulls over in front of people all the time and people are honking. So that's one of the, the stories that you'll hear from loved ones when they start noticing that there is an issue. So this um, has a slow bilateral increase in interocular pressure leading to loss of peripheral vision, where in uh, acute uh, closed angle glaucoma, you're gonna start having issues with central vision, especially when that cornea becomes um, steamy. This is peripheral vision. So it is typically due to increased production of aqueous humor or uh, blocked trabecular meshwork. And I like to tell people, this is like having that hair clog in the drain. You can fill the tub up, you can pull the plug out, and it will eventually drain, but it's just going to drain a lot slower. So that's kind of the analogy that I use um, between the two. So risk factors for this are, uh, in it increases with advancing age. It's also more prevalent in those who have a family history and definitely those who are diabetic. So this is one of the reasons why we tell diabetics that you have to get an annual eye exam. Um, as far as nationalities, it affects, it affects Afro-Caribbeans, Africans, and Hispanics um, at a much higher rate. Um, these people get it more frequently. It occurs at an earlier age and, and results in more severe optic nerve damage. So we got to get these people in and screened early. So diabetics, again, annual eye exam, annual eye exam, annual eye exam. Signs and symptoms include um, none initially. They, they don't even know they have a problem. And eventually they will have loss of that peripheral vision over um, the course of years leading to tunnel vision. On physical exam, you're going to see some uh, pathologic cupping of the optic disc. And the treatment for this is prostaglandin analogs, beta blockers, pilocarpine, and laser trabeculopathy. And we're gonna, you're going to see a little bit more on a video on that in just a second. So here's just a summary slide um, that helps kind of differentiate the types of glaucoma. Um, you have 
chronic open angle glaucoma, it's peripheral vision, it's slow onset. Acute closed angle glaucoma is a more uh, rapid onset, is an emergent referral, uh, and again, usually has issues with central vision uh, due to the stemia cornea and the halos around the lights. You can get a secondary glaucoma due to an injury, infection, tumors, or drugs. Um, and then I'll touch on this briefly now, but we'll talk about it again in just a little bit. Um, you can, kids can be born with uh, congenital glaucoma and it's abnormal for birth. And one of the things that you will see in these kiddos is they will have excess tearing when they're born. So for the learning activity for this, uh, I do want you to go to the link provided. It's about a six to seven minute YouTube video and it just kind of drives home some of the things that I've talked about here um, and reinforces some of the points. Uh, it's an excellent video. Please make sure you watch it.